folks welcome back to um the shop today we've got kind of a they're not rare but they're they're cool and they're not as common um at least as they used to be um what looks like a 1022 but it is not this is a ruger 44 carbine um 44 magnum tubular fed um, it doesn't use a rotary magazine um that was a later model when ruger came out with their um oh uh, what they call that thing uh the deer filled carbine that's the one that, that uses the rotary magazine like the 1022s this is actually what stemmed the 1022 this this design and look is where the 1022 started to kind of develop um it wasn't developed completely off of this gun because they, internally they have no similarities at all but um it's the look and the style that the 1022 became that we've got here uh, the gun was first introduced in 1961 and they called it the deer stalker uh i believe and ended up having to drop that name in uh, 62 because the Ithaca Gun Company sued them. Um, I believe the Deerstalker was a, a model of shotgun or a variation of their their 37. And so they kind of had the name and, and wasn't real happy with them. Uh, Ruger. So they changed the name to the 44 Carbine. And it was produced, uh, like I said, to 1985. Yeah. Uh, mm, mm, eh. Not a whole lot about these things. They don't have any kind of like rear, you know, history or anything like that. The um, the other the the deer field or the, the one that was uh, they, the deer field was started in 2000 until 2006 was its production. That's the one that used the rotary magazine. It's kind of like a 1022. Um, there are no similarities other than looks um, from the 44 carbine to the deer field carbine. The they, they made the Deerfield also has like a almost like an M1 carbine look to it. It's an open top versus this closed top. Uh, made it a little bit cheaper and a little bit stronger. Um, the number one complaint with these guns is one because they're old and springs wear out. You can get springs for them, the action spring and the mag magazine tube spring. Um, you can buy them in a pack and they're not terribly expensive. I think they're like twenty or twenty-five bucks from um, Wolf Springs. But any other parts you need, you're gonna have <clears throat> you're gonna have to hunt for. They're they're not common, and Ruger does not support this gun in any way at all. Like no parts, nothing. The biggest complaint about them um, early on was because lead was more common in the ammunition types. So what would happen is the the gas port on here. This is a gas operated gun. Would lead up and foul up real bad. So you would have to go in there and clean and scrub on it and. That became less of a common as, as jacketed bullets became more prevalent. And as they became more prevalent, you had less and less issues with that there. Um, it was offered in this variation here, which is your standard um, gold bead front sight here. You know, little flip up rear sight, you know, barrel band and standard stock on it. And there was three other variations. Um, one had factory sling swivels. This one, um, these were added aftermarket. No, excuse me and had a rear peep sight instead of this here it had a rear peep sight on it um there was also um international model um but it didn't have the rear peep sight it had sling swivel studs but it was also a man liquor stock no rear peep sight it used this flip up sight the sporter was the same but it had a monte carlo stock um so i believe it had the rear peep sight but it was a monte carlo stock and and sling swivels um, those other three variations were dropped in 1971. They stopped producing them, and this was the only variation of it that they sold completely. Um, the only other one that you'll run into is there's a 25th anniversary edition um, that will look like this and has the little, like, Ruger medallion in the stock here. But outside of that, they're all pretty much the same gun. Uh, internally, they're all identical, so it makes no difference. Um, obviously, we're going to make sure the gun's clear. We're going to tear down. <clears throat> And we'll start unscrewing this thing. It's a it's a four round gun, I believe. I think it, it yeah, I think it'll hold four four in the tube and one in the chamber. And there, the barrel band will come off like so. Now, when you try to pull this out of the stock, make sure your action's locked back or it won't come up. It's just gonna tilt forward and up, and then it's gonna come out. It does have a rear receiver block in it here that stays in the gun, 
don't worry about taking that guy out it's really not necessary it does have a draw bolt that comes through so you'd have to take your butt stock off to get to that pull it if you wanted to um, but there's no reason really to take that down <clears throat> from here I'm gonna spin her around just so I can get better access to it we're going to um, close our chamber so hold your charging handle push the little button in there kind of like an 1100 and let the action go forward and that's you see it loads just like a shotgun would being tube fed we are going to take the rear receiver pin out it's worth noting real quick too that when you pull this trigger group apart which is what we're going to pull out here that you need to keep an eye on this spring because it may want to launch into orbit so I just put my hand and grab it and then I'll pull that off and set that there now this magazine tube comes out next and you're going to want to pull up holding onto that spring because it's going to want to come out and then pull that off and then you can pull your tube out this does come apart um, some of them are pinned this one's actually pinched they actually just crimp the the end here so you can pull the springs out um, if it's crimped don't mess with it unless you're actually replacing the spring because you have to go back and recrimp them and mess with them um, and it's it's a pain in the butt so just leave that alone unless you absolutely have to the next thing is you'll have <clears throat> the operating rod here will just lift up and out and when you do that your charging handle will fall out to get to oh here real quick your gas piston just kind of sits in there don't lose that <clears throat> the bolt the way you get the bolt here to come out is you actually have to take a punch or something and rotate it because it's a rotating bolt rotate it out to unlock it and i almost missed you a step here the ejector on the side of this gun here it's got a little screw in it so pull that out first um, before you even go rotating that bolt out of battery screw this guy here pull that out and you're gonna pull our ejector out okay. All right, back to the bolt so you're gonna want to rotate it <clears throat> you're gonna bring it back about this far and you're just gonna lift it up and out the just like some the pins that hold so your extractor in there's a, a coil spring behind it. it it comes out you know smaller hole here so it comes out the bottom but it's staked in so unless you're having to replace something here don't fuck with it same thing with your firing pins and its spring um, it's staked and so just don't mess with it unless you're replacing something there just leave it alone um, one other thing to note about these guns is this cartridge guy that's up here you can see all that that brass and the uh, copper scrapings there that's a cartridge guide, so as the, as the round comes out of the magazine tube and tilts up, it guides this into the chamber. In the earlier guns, this is like a, a second generation, whatever you want to call it, they came drilled and tapped for scope mounts. But the problem is, and I don't know, you might be able to see it. Let's see here. You see the discolorization there? Discoloration? Yeah, discoloration. Um, the two little spots here and here. Um those are actually rivets and that's what's holding that that cartridge guide in the earlier models actually had screws that held that in and people confuse those as for the, as the forward scope based screws and they'd unscrew them and then lose that cartridge guide so the later models they started riveting them in and the barrel is drilled and tapped in the rear receiver um, so you could put scope mounts on it uh, that's that's really all there is to the receiver. Obviously, you got your front sight that'll drift out or inner rear sight, but whatever. And then you've got this little uh, plug. It's a gas plug here. And it would come out, but there's no reason to mess with that at all. Um, it, it just don't, you know, it's a roll pin. Don't, don't mess with it unless it's, there's something that has to be replaced. Just don't mess with it. Now we're going to scoot on over to the trigger group. The hardest part about this trigger group at least putting it together is going to be getting these hammer springs back in um, that is definitely the most difficult thing um, you want to put it on fire put your thumb over the hammer and and let that come down slowly 
and then from here they're going to have some pressure on them so be careful put your hammer spring legs let them drop down like this lift them out of there let's see the pins want to come already there we go and i made myself another one of those little v groove screwdrivers somebody managed to lose my other one it kind of pissed me off so i had to go take another cheap screwdriver and make it worth its weight in gold to make one of these guys then from there this little pin that rides in between those two springs you can just push out and there it goes flying pin from there you can take your, your the, the pin that actually holds the hammer in so you can hold your hammer that pin should come out relatively easy and then your hammer will come out there on this particular one the springs come out pretty easy and we'll, you'll have to make sure that those get put back in the correct orientation um, when you put them in the gun um, from here you're going to want to remove your your little release here and that's a simple when I say a simple as pushing this pin out it's tight Toy, like a toy gun knock that little guy out of there and then it should just come out now keep in mind there's a spring and plunger I sorry I keep going off camera here I'm trying to fiddle with it there is a spring and plunger in there that you need to keep an eye out when you're disassembling this thing that's this guy here it it does come out but it um, just just be careful with it that you don't lose that from there we can there's a pin here it's got a bigger head on one side than the other and just push that guy out so after you knock that pin out here you need yourself a small set of plies and you can grab a hold of this guy and that's got under it's not like serious spring pressure but it is it's got some it's got a little bit of pressure to it it's a pretty big spring you're going to want to try and just push it in and lift it out <clears throat> once you have that there's a pin here that holds this little guy in. I don't even know what the hell you call that, man. Um, carrier dog? Yeah, I think that's what it would be as a carrier dog. Um, you're going to want to... Let's see this one. I don't know if I can just tap it out. Yep, sure shit. It just fell out. Where'd it go? That pin, this one, it just kind of falls out. If it doesn't, you can take a, a screwdriver or something and kind of push it a little bit. But then that guy will just come out your carrier dog. And then at this point, you can take the carrier out. And it's kind of like the, the Marlins um, lever guns. You can just grab it with some pliers here. And you can, you can pinch it. And pull it out the top. Like that. Now, from here, what we are going to do is pull our trigger out. But the trigger... Um, return spring and this particular model is this one has a screw in it and I think that's a new update as well I think the old ones did not have this screw for that um, spring and plunger the trigger return spring and plunger so pull that screw out and there's your spring and plunger there now we have a pin left here for the trigger push it out it is under spring pressure keep that in mind when you when you push this thing through there and it's worth having your finger there when you pull your your punch out because your sear has that big giant spring there that long one and your sear from disconnector and your trigger and I'll show you how that orient you know gets oriented um, that falls into I don't know if you can see there that little hole right there is where that spring sets this one like all the other detented safeties what I'll do is I'll push the safety about halfway there and rotate it and what it does is it makes a flat spot um, this is another one of those things where this spring is gonna come launching out of there like crazy um, so when you push that through kinda I just turn it upside down and try and cover everything up and there it is the 
other things that we have here are your, your shell latches, which are relatively important to the gun. Uh, these pins are in these these two pins, this guy and this guy, and you can't mix them up. They're of different sizes. This is bigger than this one, um, but they're in a blind hole, so you can't get at them from the underneath side. And what you end up having to do is taking a screwdriver and trying to put your thumb and get a little bit of pressure off of it and push. See how that came out? You're, you're, you're like trying to push and pry up on it and you're going to scratch the pin no matter what you do. So don't, don't sweat that. And then just grab the pin with pliers and you can pull on it a little bit at a time and it'll come out of there. The spring's got a little bit of tension on it. So she comes out, and that big guy there comes out. Now there is another little coil spring underneath here, and when we put it back together, I'm going to keep note of this for you. Um, this one here, even though it's a blind hole, once you get another spring out, you do have a place to grab it and lift, so you don't have to use the screwdriver and scratch it up as much. Parts are going to come dropping out of there like crazy, including that other little coil spring there. You don't want to lose that. And there's your, your cartridge stops. The two springs that are on this cartridge stop, and I'll show you again when we when we put it back together, one is physically longer than the other. Like so. You can see like side by side. The longer one goes on the back side, this back nub here, and the shorter one goes on the front nub. And I'll, I'll show you all that when we put it back together. Um, that's that's it. That's all there is to that that trigger group there, and the gun. Um, they're not complicated. Um, they can be. The hardest part putting it back together is going to be getting this hammer in with those two springs. They can be kind of goofy. Um, I, I've done it a couple of times and I still have trouble with them. But really neat guns. Um, they're awesome. Um, yeah, they're not fairly, they're not real common and they tend to be fairly pricey when you find them if you find them in pawn shops or whatever else so but they're cool i think they're awesome guns uh, just something about having a, a 44 carbine that's not a lever action that's kind of neat um, i apologize for the wait too on the videos now that we're we're kind of at the end of this one here um it's been so long i think before, before december even since i've made one um the friday just before Christmas, um, I ended up breaking my leg, so I missed a couple of weeks of work. And when I came back, I was playing some pretty severe catch-up. Um, so much so that I've even hired another guy onto the shop to do um, some of my, my more monkey work, um, cleaning site installs and things like that, and to deal with customers, so it gives me time to do real gunsmithing. Um, believe it or not, I actually do real gunsmithing in the shop, but I only, you know, I only bring you to the table what I think is important. Um, outside of that, um, thanks for hanging in, and I, again, I apologize for the wait. Um, if you guys are following me, you know, religiously, I'm, I'm over a thousand views now, actually almost 1,200 subscribers, excuse me, not views, subscribers, and I'm waiting on, there, there's a possibility I might even get monetized, who knows, it's YouTube, and there's all kinds of goofy shit there. We don't know, we'll see. Um, tons and tons of views, though. Um, and I appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching, sticking with me. Give me a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, share. Um, let me know down in the comments. You got anything that you want to know or have some stupid comment to make towards me? I'm happy to happy to banter back and forth. You guys have a good one.